the reason I actually went to Mambo in 2003 was at that moment in time I was working with a, a proprietary CMS that was costing um, my clients 75,000 euros um, a year. That's even before they started using it. Um, I thought it was an absolute rip-off, found Mambo, and that's the way I went. Uh, 2005, I was invited to um, be on the board of directors for OSM as the capital committee chair. And in 2012, um, I stumbled across, really early in 2012, I stumbled across this thing called Bootstrap. Um, and I thought it was the way to go for mobile. Um, also at that time, I, I created my own sort of small template cup called Juicestrap. Luckily enough for me, Joomla actually decided to put uh, Bootstrap in the core. So it was sort of like a happy mix and I was in the right place at the right time and went the right direction. A um, few things we're going to talk about. Uh, what is Bootstrap, the power of Bootstrap and some other bits and pieces which we'll go through as, um, as I go through. A couple of questions for you first. Um, is there anybody here that doesn't know Joomla? Cool. Okay, I'll teach you afterwards. It'll take about 10 minutes. Um, anybody here who actually uses Bootstrap? Cool. Okie dokie. They describe Bootstrap on the, their website as a framework. For, de uh, for developing responsive mobile first projects. It's not, it's not a framework, okay? What it actually is, is one CSS file, you know, if you use it how I use it, it's one CSS file and one, uh, sorry, two JavaScript files. Um, and some other bits and pieces that really, really help you to do things very, very quickly. All right, so Bootstrap has a huge, huge community reason I want to mention this is that some guys, um, and I did it myself, um, just prior to, to actually finding Bootstrap, actually go off and build their own framework. They've actually got to support that themselves, take it forward, um, add new features and enhancements, etc. The huge community here is keeping up to date <coughs> with things that are going on, adding new enhancements, and I just think it's the way to go. Um, there's so much functionality in there that you can use. You don't have to use it but you can use it. It's all there just baked in. The big thing for me, I have to pay my bills, all right? It saves me so much time and it saves me so much money messing around with my own, um, shall we call it, framework. So this is actually what I call it, okay? It's, it's, it's just some bits and pieces that will really help you get where you want to go really, really quickly. Great new things, I'm, I'm not going to explain all of these, but you know, there's great things in there where you know, people were looking at Bootstrap and saying, oh, it's less, and I'm a SaaS guy, and SaaS is better, and all of this sort of stuff. Um, SaaS is now in there. Um, Ratchet is a really, really cool one. I don't know whether you know about Ratchet, um, but they're really getting their teeth into it now. It's, it's based on Bootstrap, and you might come across the odd, odd, odd client that want a website, they might want it responsive, um, but they actually want uh, an application to go on, um, you know, your phones as well. Uh, Ratchet is there to help you. And if you know Bootstrap and you're building websites with it, Ratchet is just an absolute breeze. It's so easy. Bootstrap. Okay. I, I would, I'm not going to go through it. All right, I can spend all day talking about Bootstrap. Go there, read the documentation. The two main things for me, okay, that I get everybody to look at and just sort of study and, and see what it does and, and changing things and how you play with it is the grid system and the, the res, uh, responsive utilities. Um, the great thing about it with the, um, the new grid system, unlike Bootstrap 2, is that as we go down through the viewpoints, we can actually now do different changes with the columns. Okay, so rather than it going from three wide down to one, we can say three, two, one, or keep it at three one, when we're on a small device, whatever you want to do. You don't have to use everything in Bootstrap, and I'm going to show you later on how you can get around that. Okay, just, you know, go there, 
make some money and have, have a bit of fun. Th this is one that I keep on coming across. And I, you know, I thought it would sort of dry out after a while. Um, people still say, I can see a bootstrap uh, website a million miles away. Um, they all look the same. You know, I go on websites and it's bootstrap. You know, if we take the base stuff that is in bootstrap, yes, it does look the same. Okay, all these buttons look the same and, you know, the layouts and the navigation, etc. Okay, it does get a bit boring. Get a designer. Okay, designers will get a grip with Bootstrap in 10 minutes. They, they actually love it, okay, because they have a basis to work to, you know, a grid system, etc. Get a designer and get him involved. You can, s you know, start creating websites like this. This is one of uh, Gavin's over the back there, Red 11 Creative. Um, you know, it, to me, doesn't look like Bootstrap. Okay, this is one that I created for a school. Doesn't look bootstrap. Again, another one. This is one I'm in the process of, of um, creating at the moment. And this one here is using bootstrap. That big slide, I think, is bootstrap. Okay, but I've done it in such a way that it just doesn't look like the carousel that you would see that comes out of the box. Again, another carousel at the top. I've just added a bit more functionality to add, you know, the temperatures and all the rest of it as you slide through from Africa to, I don't know, America or whatever. So, it, you know, it really does not need to look like Bootstrap. Get a designer, get him in there, he'll love it. Customising Bootstrap, um, there, this, this is my first option, okay? This is the way that I always used to do it. On the Bootstrap website, you can go to Customize, okay, and you will see uh, a page like this, and you can go and uncheck some of these bits and pieces. I don't need the, you know, the glimp icons, and I don't need the labels and the badges, and you know, I don't need this, um, uh, you know, JavaScript bit, you know, for doing collapse um, or tabs or whatever. You can go through and you can change whatever you want, take away whatever you want, and then right at the end you can actually click on the download um, and download a specific, um, should we call it base um, CSS and, and JavaScript just for yourself. But I would say actually don't touch it. That's the way I used to do it. Don't touch it, just leave it alone. Okay, because if you um, don't leave it alone, if an update comes along, you've got to go through the whole process again all right, to get, your, um, get, to get your bootstrap and CSS files. Um, so what I do is I override everything. Um, I create a custom CSS and a custom JS uh, for my JavaScript, and I override whatever I want to override. Okay, as long as I load it after bootstrap, <laughs> um, everything's absolutely fine. So, you know, we can take our buttons and we can give them, you know, bigger radiuses or we can take the radius away. We can um, create brand new buttons Okay, using you know what we know in Bootstrap already, we can you know override um, any of the, the Bootstrap JavaScript. With this, all we're doing here is just pausing the slides. <sighs> Bootstrap is bloated. Yes, it is. It's, it's, it's huge. Okay, and really, when they would started developing it, they didn't think. I know it was for mobiles and mobile first and all the rest of it. I don't think they thought about that really um, because of the size of the files and the amount of files um, that you get out of the box is huge. So as I said with that customized thing, you can actually reduce and remove a lot of the bits and pieces that you don't want. You might just want the, uh, the mobile uh, utility bits and pieces. Um, so when you're moving your screen in or going on a mobile phone or an iPad or whatever, everything works brilliantly. So what I used to do uh, was remove everything I didn't want, okay? You can see that, you know, th this is, the totals down at the bottom here are for the minified files. We're talking of a quarter of a megabyte, okay? If you load it out of the box, it's just crazy, okay? If we then customize it, um, take away all the CSS and the JavaScript we don't want, 
okay, we can get it down by a huge amount, 50K. Um, so that is a way to do it. But actually, it's not the way to do it, okay? The main way to do it, oh, sorry, th this is just a little bit of a tip. Uh, does anybody know this? No? Dust me down for Firefox? I'm, I'm a Chrome user, okay? Firefox has one thing, and I only open it for this one thing. I would say, go get this, try it, you will love it, okay? Absolutely adore it. This website, it's a huge website. Okay, everybody knows the Telegraph. I went there the other day, and I dusted it down, with dust me down from Firefox. There are, I haven't got my glasses, 3,679 unused selectors, all right, CSS selectors, in their files. Okay, you can do just one page, or you can spider the whole site. That's how many selectors there are. How many lines? I haven't got a clue. You know, one of those selectors might have 10 or 12 lines, whatever. That's how much bloat is in their site. Just, just for that, just for the CSS there. Okay? The great thing about this, and I, I run this every time I've finished a website, because, you know, we all do our CSS. Um, we all add bits and pieces and another bit and pieces, and then we add another bit, and we've forgotten that we did some up here, and it's like being overridden and blah, blah, blah. Okay, I run this on every single website before it goes live. And, you know, I, even myself, and I, you know, I think about this. Even I find selectors that I'm not using anywhere on any page of that website. Great thing about this is that we can actually say, right, okay, what selectors am I using? You can click a button and it will just give you a CSS file with the selectors you're using across the site. Okay, getting rid of near on 4,000 selectors there. Okay, so I, I would say use it. Okay, I was gonna put 50, uh, 50 euros on the table and say, anybody come to me with their site, I bet you I can find stuff that you're not using. But I'm not gonna, because there's a couple of people out there that I know who are pretty good. I've said that, you know, I used to customize the, the, um, uh, the bootstrap. Um, and if I don't customize, I leave it alone so I can update it really quickly. I can just, you know, drop in the new CSS files when we go from, you know, 3.x to 3.y or whatever. Um, I would actually say, don't touch it, and actually don't load, don't, don't download Bootstrap. Who knows what CDN is? Who uses CDNs? You're all nuts. You're completely mad. And I'll tell you why. Um, a CDN is a way to deliver stuff really quickly. Okay, um, you know, this, where the red spot there is might be our origin, that's where we might have put it. Okay, with a lot of the big CDNs, um, you know, Google, uh, Twitter, etc., they have, should we call it, relocations um, or, or co-located servers across the world. So we're not having to have to do loads of jumps. Um, you know, we can pick up files from the CDN really quickly. But that's not the main reason I use a CDN. Okay, it, first of all, it distributes the load. Okay, it saves you bandwidth. Okay, it gives you really good uh, performance. I mean, who puts videos on their server and allows every single user to use their bandwidth? Anybody? So why, okay, I was going to sing this, but I've <laughs> got a bit of a sore throat, so I'm. Um, so why put jQuery on your server? It's, it's not huge. Okay, why put jQuery on your server when there is um, a CDN, all right, a main one, and it's scattered all over the world so you can get it quickly, all right, where jQuery is, okay? It, it really is as simple as that, okay? Don't put it on your server, use it from a CDN. The main reason for using a CDN for me is that 
Diane went to the Joomla.org site. In her browser, okay, Joomla is pulling jQuery from the CDN. It's on her browser. Okay? Diane then goes to my website where I'm using a CDN, and it doesn't go to the CDN. It gets jQuery off Diane's browser. Super, super quick. So all I do here in my templates is I have a little switch. So I give you the ability to, to um, actually, there's, there's, there's three switches that I have. I have download uh, jQuery. I have load it locally from my folder on my server and load it from the CDN. If we load it from the CDN, this is where it comes from. Okay, if Diane's been there already, it doesn't grab it from the CDN, it grabs it from Diane's computer super quickly. So we do the same with Bootstrap. I never download Bootstrap. I just, I just change the, you know, the, the version here. Okay, and somebody somewhere, most probably, on their computer has downloaded Bootstrap CSS and Bootstrap min.js already. Okay, so that quarter of a megabyte um, of uh, this stuff that wasn't, you know, we hadn't removed all this stuff. You know, we, we removed all this stuff and made it 50K on our server. Where now, if Diane has already been to a site that has got Bootstrap, okay, we're now actually making it zero. Zero load time at all. Doesn't take any time. It's so, so quick. And again, with Bootstrap, what I do in my templates is um, I say, don't load it, load it locally out of my folder on my server, or grab it from the CDN. And it really is as simple as that. That's, that's making my templates. People are saying to me, oh God, you know, you're actually loading all that bootstrap. I'm not, I'm not loading it at all. It's all coming from the CDN. And they say, oh, you know, how are you loading all this stuff? And it's so bloody quick. It's coming from the CDN. It's already on your computer. Say that again, sorry. It's not just mine, it's the full Bootstrap file. It's the full quarter of a megabyte. I don't, I, it could be six megabyte, I don't care. I don't care. Okay, it's coming from the CDN. You're more than likely to have it on your computer. jQuery, you most definitely, 99% will have it on your computer already. You know, I just load it all from the CDN. It's so, so quick. Um, that, that seems, I don't know what the time is. It seems to have gone really, really quick. Um, I'm open to any questions. <laughs> I was going to make a joke about this, but I've, I did it last night and I forgot what it was, so I didn't have time to take it out. Um, so this is me. Um, either ask me questions now or at lunch or by email or Twitter or, or whatever. Oh, sorry.